Hello friends, I am Advocate Dr. K. V. Vijay Kumar, back again with a new topic of public interest. Today I am going to discuss with you the topic about the rights of daughters in the inheritance of property of the father. A landmark decision was made by the government of India and a law was passed incorporating certain sections in the Hindu Succession Act 1956 stating that effective from 2005, the date on which the law was made and the president had given the assent, from the effective from that date, the daughters had the right of inheritance of the property of the father. Now this class had a limitation that both the father and the daughter or daughters should have been alive on the date the law was enacted. So there was a stipulation like this and that led to a lot of confusions and litigations in the High Court as well as some cases have gone up to the Supreme Court. There are different decisions given by courts, both High Court and Supreme Court, contradictory decisions <coughs> and complementary decisions which created more and more confusion as to what the law actually says. In 2015, a lady who was denied the right to property since the law stipulated that only from 2005 the law was effective. She argued in the Supreme Court through her counsel that her relationship as a daughter to her father commenced at the time of birth irrespective of what the law says and it goes on even after the death of both the father and the daughter. The bond can never be separated by anybody or by any date or by any law. The fact that I am a daughter to my father begins the moment I am born that cannot be delimited by anybody and it is not natural justice. The Supreme Court accepted this argument, rightly so, and they said even people who were born before the enactment of Hindu Succession Act 1956 are eligible for equal rights among the sons in regard to the property of the father. This is one issue. There is another issue. What about ancestral property? Where the father has inherited the property from his father or even earlier, great grandfather may be. So what about those properties? So are daughters rights limited only to the self-acquired property of the father or is it also inclusive of the ancestral property of the father? Again there were several uh, discussions, decisions in the courts and finally Supreme Court has declared that the daughter has a right in the assets held by the father both self-acquired and inherited. They have equal rights on par with the sons. So that settled the matter once and for all but it opened the floodgates of litigation in every nook and corner of the country because even people, even daughters who are aged around 60 years and were living in harmony with their brothers, resigned to the fact that they were not going to get any property, started going for a litigation. And what the sons had been enjoying for the last maybe even 20-30 years, now they had to share it with the sisters. But that was the right given by law and therefore the brothers had no justification in denying them this. Let us see who and at what time they are eligible. As long as the father is alive and his property is self-acquired, he has got the right to give it to anybody, even a person on the street. In my last topic, we discussed about the will, the last testament and the will, where the person having the property, self-acquired property or as to whatever it is, whatever is in his name, he can will it away to anybody. I gave you an example of Priyam Mother Birla who had bequeathed her assets of over 5000 crores rupees at that point of time in early 2000 to her auditor and consultant, one Mr. R.S. Lodha, who had no way connected with the family, who had no relationship with anybody in the family. Though Birla's contested that the property worth was more than 20,000 crores, it's not a question of what the property is worth, it is a question of what property was bequeathed to whom. So if it is father's ancestral property, <coughs> he has no right to give it off. 
he has to share it with his sons and daughters equally. Where it is a self-acquired property, then he can will it to anybody he likes among the family. Now, then when do the daughters get the rights? The daughters get the rights only when the father dies without writing a will. That is why I emphasized that you must write a will as early as possible the moment you feel that you have got enough properties which might create problem among the siblings. <coughs> Therefore, there are two situations here. One, father self forget property can be willed to anybody by the father. As long as he has willed it, then nobody can dispute the rights of the holder of the will or the beneficiary of the will. Number two, father does not will to anybody but dies without writing a will which we call interstate then his property has to be shared between the brothers I mean between the sons and daughters equally <coughs> according to the Hindu Succession Act class 1 legal heirs or class 2 legal heirs or whatever it is in the case of ancestral property the father has no right to will it off because it is not his self acquired property and therefore the children both sons and daughters have an equal right over the ancestral property so now the situation is very clear as long as the father self acquired property is there he has got his own rights to will it to anybody as long as his ancestral property is there he cannot write it off to anybody else but only distribute it among the children equally now a situation may arise wherein the father died interstate the property will be decided, I mean will be shared by the widow, that is your mother, sons and daughters equally. Now what happens when the mother also died interstate after the father has died? What about her share of property? So her share of property as long as it is again interstate has to be shared between the remaining children equally because it is again not her self acquired property therefore she has no right to will it off to I mean nobody has got a right over it unilaterally or singularly it has to be again shared now like uh, let us give an example in this case father dies in 1995 he had his wife when he died he was <coughs> having a wife one son two daughters so which means it has to be divided by four. Out of love and action for the for the mother, the daughters told the mother, you can continue to stay in this house, you can continue to get the rental income out of the properties accrued in your own name, you can use it for yourself, you don't have any objection. The mother died in 2005, again interstate, there was no will. And after some time, the eldest son dies. Again, in the state, there is no will. Now, what happens? Who is going to own the property? The father has died, mother has died, one of the sons has died, and only two daughters are left. Now, what will be the situation of these two daughters? There is a case currently being litigated in a court in the Bangalore. The daughter in law of the first son, the only son, says that she is the owner of the entire property she will not part with any share to anybody is that right now let us go back to 1995 to give you, give you better clarity let us go back to 1995 when the father died <coughs> he had two properties two different documents that is adjacent to each other the property sites were adjacent to each other on one side, he had built two houses on the ground floor. On the other side, which is the corner side, he had built two houses on the ground floor. One first floor, one second floor and a large room on the terrace, third floor. So now what happens? So there is no demarcation of property in this case. Mother, son and two daughters, there are four people. Who will have to share the property? No documents were executed till 2005, that is 10 years later. The mother was suspected to have cancer and the son decided he should 
somehow exploit the situation emotionally and get the properties written in his name. So what happened? He forced his mother to come from the hospital, cancer hospital and execute a document in his favor. The document is executed. The two daughters out of emotional content because the mother was in a very serious situation. They didn't want to raise any objections at that point of time. This emotional he will emotional feeling was exploited by the brother and he got the document transferred in his name for the property that was on the <coughs> that the property 1200 square feet 30 by 40 where two houses were there the ground floor so that property became partitioned exclusively in the name of the brother countersigned by both the daughters and the mother therefore is a perfectly legally valid document where the daughters have let go of the rights in the property because they have signed as witnesses, consenting witnesses we call it. So they have consented to the property going to the brother and he becomes the sole owner of the property despite the two daughters having their share, they have let go of the rights. Now coming back to the other property where there are three floors the ground floor having two houses, <coughs> one first floor, second floor and a large room on the terrace, terrace was largely, largely vacant, there is one room that was built. Now what happens to this property? So in 2005 October, the mother dies. At this point of time, the son had taken away one chunk of the property, there are three floors and therefore the daughters now realize that they don't want to lose it so therefore they claimed that in the remaining property in this particular thing they have the rights in 2005 they had, there was a discussion when the mother was uh, diagnosed as being uh, suffering from cancer that the son will have the other property exclusively for himself and this property the three floors will be owned by the three females in the family the mother and two daughters one floor each the terrace will be for common use so the understanding at that time was when the mother dies, the two daughters will share that property. But then before the documents could be executed, the daughters had an emotional appeal for the mother because she was suffering and they didn't want her to come to the register office like what the son had claimed. And therefore they said we will wait for it and after mother is okay, little better then we can go for the documentation. But the son insisted that his document should be cleared and he got it done. Perfectly legal document executed with no other uh, problems with the site or the signatories. Now, the daughters agreed that they will give one share to the daughter-in-law, that is the brother's wife, in the other property also. But then the daughter's daughter-in-law says, nothing doing, every property is mine, I will not give. So naturally, litigation differences arose and there is a litigation going on. Obviously, the face of law currently in force, the daughter-in-law has no chance of retaining the property to herself. But there is one thing, <clears throat> out of emotional attachment, love and affection, the daughters had allowed the mother to utilize the property and also to take the rental income from the property. The son was staying with the mother. Now the daughter-in-law continues to stay in the same house, occupy the same house, while she has the husband's property on the side exclusively in the name of the husband and also misusing this property, not willing to vacate the property. <coughs> now when there is when there is an option that you can either go there or you'll be here, she wants to retain the entire property not giving any of the floors to the other daughters of the family. Now the litigation started, litigation is going on. Eventually over a matter of time the court has to decide that the daughters have got a share. But what happens when you take the matter to court, you cannot say I have two or three different rights but I will only insist on one of the rights being decided by law and the other two rights I will not claim. You have to claim whatever is there in your rights. So when the case was filed in the court, the daughters raised the issue of the rent not being shared since the mother's death. That is in 2005. So that worked out about 20 lakhs each payable by the 
Now the daughter in law has to pay this because she was the one who was enjoying the property. That has to be paid. So the, now we, if it has been out of court settlement, probably the one floor she could have retained, the other documents could have been made so that each of them have got one floor. Now because it is under litigation, she has got an additional commitment of about 20 25 lakhs by the time the court decides maybe it will be 30 35 lakhs. Because the rental income is about nearly 75,000 rupees a month, which she is enjoying all along. Now it is two days, two years since the brother has died. The last two years she is enjoying the property all alone, not sharing anything with anybody else. So when the court decides later, they have to say that the share of the property, rental income accrued on the property is also to be given, a share of it to be given to the daughters. So it is not just the property. If the sons are enjoying rental income accruing out of the father's property on which the daughters have got a share, then they have also a share in the rental income of the property. So daughters have got the right to property, whether it is in ancestral or self-acquired, if there is an interstate situation without a will, they also have a right in the income that is accruing of the property, out of the property. So these are the basic elements of how the law sees as the right of the daughter's share in father's property. So I hope <coughs> now the uh, daughters can have some clarity on the issue and if anybody has got any clarification that is required, you can either email me at dr.vijayakumarkb at gmail.com or message me on the Facebook. There have been several cases, litigations. <coughs> there has been a spot in litigations after the Supreme Court gave a decision that the daughters have got rights over ancestral property as well and irrespective of when you were born, as long as you are born as a daughter to your father, you have a right which is not arguable or which is not bequeathable to anybody else. So now the sons are at the receiving end. Now there are cases where the female is aged about 60 years and the brother is aged about 60, 65 years, more than 60 years and then he has to now share the income that has been accruing out of the rental of the property for the last maybe 20, 30 years mind-boggling amount and not only that he has to now share the property with the sisters but this is the law so you have to abide by the law you have to comply with the law whether you like it or you don't like it and obviously nobody likes to share the property okay brothers think sons think that it is their right and the daughters daughters-in-law or the brothers wives do not want to let go of anything even if the Brother would like to give, the daughters in law will say nothing, to you. why should you give, let them go to court. Because they go to court 10-15 years, it may take. But today, law is streamlined, not going to take that much time. Maybe in a matter of 2-3 to three years, if you have got a good advocate, like me obviously, you can probably get your uh, case settled within about 2-3 to three years. So, the sons beware. Brothers beware. A claim can come from your sisters any time. If you have been enjoying the property all by yourself, it is time to pay back. It is time to share. It is time to give back whatever you enjoyed by yourself. Whatever is the right share, you have to accept. You have to give it back to them. There is no escaping from the law. So I wish all the daughters and the sisters happy sharing of the property. And then when you are sharing the property. Please remember when you have daughters, you also have to share it to them and not just pamper the sons with giving away all the wealth to them. Please abide by the law. Please comply by the law. Because if you don't do it, then there is no need for a law. It is not a question of our likes and dislikes. It is a question of what the law says. And even to a certain extent, we can say that even if the law does not permit me to give, I should be able to give because it is not my property. I have not earned it. So if my sisters what I share in the property, I should be able to give it. But today the property price is being so high, sky high. Some of the properties in prime areas are worth tens of crores. So no, nobody wants to let go of the property. That is the big issue. If it is not worth anything, they will just throw it off. Give it to the daughters. Okay, go and take it. But the value is what creates the greed. Value having gone up, that creates the greed. Therefore, let us share. Let us all be happy. Thank you and wish you all the best.